Hello, health champions. Today, we're going to talk about 10 serious body signs that you really need to know. The first one is chest pain or pressure across the chest. And this could be something as serious as a heart attack, but it could also be a lesser version of heart disease called angina. And that's not where the heart is damaged, but angina is when it's not getting enough blood supply and it's kind of fighting to produce energy and it starts cramping and you get that pain shooting out oftentimes into the arm. Another thing could be simply indigestion or GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, and that could also manifest as chest pain. We could also have anxiety or panic attacks. A lot of people with severe anxiety or panic they will sense that pressure across the chest. And the pain could also be from an infection in the lungs called pneumonia, or more serious would be a pulmonary embolism, which means there's a blood clot that's formed somewhere, and then it's dislodged, it comes loose, and it travels and it gets stuck in the lung. If that happens in the brain, that's called a stroke. If it's in the lung, it's called a pulmonary embolism. Either way, the blood vessel is blocked off. It's clogged and no more blood can flow and the tissue around there is damaged. So if this was a heart attack or a pulmonary embolism, then you have to really get to the ER as soon as possible. If it's any of the other things, now it's not as urgent and you can start looking at resolving the root cause and breathing exercises can be hugely beneficial because most of these other things have to do with stress. And there are some products though that can help. And one thing we find in our clinic is Cardio Plus. Anyone that needs some heart support, Cardio Plus usually comes in very useful. And if you have the angina, if you have those cramps in the heart, then what you're looking for is some vasodilation. And there's a product called Cataplex E2, also from Standard Process. Now, Cataplex E2, there's a percentage, there's a portion of that in the Cardio Plus already. So if you need more general support, Cardio Plus is great. If you need some extra help with a the vasodilation, then you could get the Cataplex E2 or maybe both so that you can get some extra Cataplex E2. And that can really help dilate those blood vessels and help get that heart a little bit more blood. And if your problem turns out to be indigestion or GERD, then what you actually need is a little more acid. So apple cider vinegar is acidic, or Zypan is a product that has hydrochloric acid in it, which is a little more powerful even than apple cider vinegar, because it's not that GERD is too much acid like most people think, it's that you don't have enough so the body can't complete the digestive process in the right way. You add some acid and now things work better and most of that GERD goes away in most cases. Number two is shortness of breath. And what that simply means is the body's not getting enough air or oxygen, so it tries to compensate by breathing more. And the first thing we wanna think about is anemia. That means lack of blood so you don't have enough oxygen carrying capacity. You don't have enough red blood cells or enough hemoglobin in the red blood cells, and then you can't distribute that oxygen properly. Now, in my blood work course, I talk about which scenarios you could benefit from iron, because most people just think anemia, you need iron, but there's some cases where iron will actually hurt you. You already have enough, but you still can't make those red blood cells. And in those cases, you might need some other micronutrients. Shortness of breath could also be something called COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So either there's a lot of resistance in the lungs or the heart is a little too weak to pump blood through the lungs. Either way, we don't absorb that oxygen. We can't distribute that oxygen properly. And another one is called emphysema. That usually happens to smokers. After many years of smoking, their lung tissue starts breaking down and is destroyed. So you don't have the same surface area 
and you can't absorb the oxygen either. And there's no simple fix for this, but you can try breathing exercises, especially with steam. If part of this problem is that you have mucus and buildup, then that can help dissolve some of that. And breathing exercises can also help relax and dilate the tissues a little bit. And if you do have some destruction or stress to the lung tissue or some irritation, then you could use Emphaplex or something called Pneumotrophin PMG. Both of those products show up a lot in our office for people who have any sort of lung issue. And this could also be very helpful after a severe infection like a pneumonia or even COVID or a serious cold where the tissue has had some stress. Number three is a severe headache. And a lot of people, anytime they have a severe headache, they call it a migraine. But actually migraine refers to half a brain. So typically with a migraine, you're only gonna have it in half the head, but it doesn't mean it's any less severe. But all other types would be tension headaches and cluster headaches. So those are just descriptions of different types of headaches. But you could have different causes also. So you could have one from a stroke. If it comes on very suddenly and it's a type of headache you've never had before, you wanna take that very, very seriously. That could be a stroke, which again is either a bleed in the brain, a ruptured blood vessel, or a clot in the brain. It could be sinusitis, meaning an infection in the sinuses. And sinuses are small caverns in the bone in the front of the head. And if they get filled up with fluid, they can put pressure and create headaches. Pressure can also be created by brain tumors, obviously, or we could have something called a hypertensive crisis, which is a sudden very high blood pressure. And this is not your average 150, 160. This is when something gets completely out of control and your blood pressure is 180, 200 or above that type of blood pressure can create serious headaches. And that is also a hypertensive crisis, is also a medical emergency. So when anything that happens suddenly and something that's worse than you've ever had before, uh, you wanna go visit the emergency room. But if it's not that urgent, then you wanna figure out what the root cause is and address that root cause, obviously. Some of the first things that you wanna try are some diet changes, some eliminations, because a lot of times there are triggers that people are sensitive to different foods, and the top foods to avoid would be wheat with gluten in it, chocolate, alcohol, especially red wine is a trigger for a lot of people, and also caffeine can be a trigger. Number four is a sudden weakness on the one side of the body, and this is pretty serious and you wanna think stroke again, but it could also be a transient ischemic attack, a TIA, which is not a full stroke, but it looks the same in the short term. Whereas a stroke is a permanent damage to brain tissue, a TIA is a temporary cutoff of blood. It's where you have a spasm, where the blood isn't getting the oxygen support, and it seems like a stroke, but it goes away after a few minutes or maybe up to an hour. And then you're back to feeling normal, but you wanna take this very, very seriously because it means that there's something not working right. And you're probably much more likely, if you have these repeatedly, you're much more likely to actually be at risk for stroke. The weakness could also be from a disc herniation. And we're talking a severe disc herniation where the disc ruptures, like a donut, you squeeze out the jelly out of the donut and it puts pressure on a nerve. And if this happens on one side of the body, which typically it's gonna be more on one side, then you could lose muscle function in that side of the body, but you would also have severe pain associated with that. Either way, if you lose muscle function, it's pretty serious and you wanna to go to the emergency room. However, it'd be much better to prevent this altogether. And then we need to understand where most of these problems come from. And cardiovascular disease and stroke are primarily caused by metabolic problems, metabolic syndrome and insulin resistance. So the way to avoid it, to reduce your chances, you can never eliminate risk entirely, but you can reduce chances 
very much by eating right and not becoming insulin resistant. And there's no substitute for lifestyle changes, but if you'd like a couple of products to assist you as you're making lifestyle changes, there's a product called Cataplex GTF. And GTF stands for Glucose Tolerance Factor. And another one is Diaplex from Standard Process. And both of these will help your body utilize glucose better and regulate that blood sugar a little bit better. Number five is loss of bowel and bladder function. And this is really serious. It relates to what we just talked about, which is severe disc herniations. The difference here is it's happening a little bit further down and it's happening at a place called the cauda equina. And cauda equina means horse's tail. So down at the bottom of the spine, the spinal cord comes to an end in the lower back. And then from above that, we have these nerve roots coming off of the spinal cord. But then at the end, they just start traveling further down. And at the end, we don't have the spinal cord. We just have these nerve roots going on for a few inches. And this is called the cauda equina or the horse tail. Now, if you have a severe disc herniation, this is a place where you can affect both sides of the nerve roots. And if this happens to a serious degree, you could lose bowel and bladder function. Another thing you'll probably notice is a loss of muscle function. And a classic sign is called foot drop. That means if you set your heel down, normally you smoothly put the rest of the foot down. But with foot drop, you put the heel down and the foot just flops straight down and you can't lift the toes off the floor anymore. And if any of this happens, you definitely want to get to the emergency room as soon as possible. Number six is difficulty speaking or understanding speech. And the first thing we want to think about here is stroke if it comes on suddenly, but it could also be some other type of brain trauma like a severe concussion or even a tumor that's growing in a specific place. If this happens slower, more gradual onset, now we're thinking degeneration, which would be something like a frontotemporal dementia, or it could also be the other types of dementia like Alzheimer's or also Parkinson's, all of which are neurodegenerative. The brain breaks down over a period of time. And as far as whether it affects the speech or the understanding, depends on where in the brain this is. So if we have the brain here and we have the frontal lobe, we have the occipital lobe, we have the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe, then the frontal lobe is the motor, that's the output, the speech. And there's an area, there's a cutoff here between frontal and posterior. So motor is in the front, sensory is in the back. And the speech area is sitting right here. It's called Broca's area. So if that is affected by a tumor or a stroke, now you would lose the speech. You can still understand, but you can't speak. And these people oftentimes, they think that they're speaking. They know the words they want to come out, but nothing's happening. However, if it's the other way around, you can't understand what people say, then it would be an area back here in the sensory portion called Wernicke's area. And now these people can make sounds, they can speak, but they don't understand what people are saying. So frontotemporal dementia tends to affect speech more than Alzheimer's because frontotemporal is going to affect the frontal and the temporal. But because that includes the frontal, then the speech, the motor function is affected. The Alzheimer's is going to be more in the temporal occipital, not so much the frontal, at least at first. So they would have more of a loss of understanding speech rather than speaking. And of course, Parkinson's has a problem with motor function, not just speech, but all sorts of movements. So they would also have trouble more so with speaking than understanding. So if there's a sudden onset, then you want to get to the emergency room. If it's more of a gradual onset, now we want to do prevention. We want to get healthy. And what does that mean? It's all the things we talk about on this channel. We address the chemical, structural, and emotional stresses of life. And one of the biggest ones, again, 
that causes degeneration is insulin resistance. So we want to learn where we are on that scale of insulin resistance by measuring the right blood markers and then taking the right action. And there's not like a magic pill that's going to solve all these issues. But if I was to pick just one that most people are deficient in, it would be fish oil. And if we're talking brain, then we want to think DHA. And the product I have in mind is called Tuna Omega because it's very easy to take. It is inexpensive for what you get. Normal fish oil, most fish oil sold, has a certain ratio of EPA to DHA. And both of these are good, but DHA is mostly the building material of the brain, the cell membranes. And most fish oil has a three to two ratio where it has more EPA, but the tuna omega has a five to one ratio where it has more DHA. So both of these are good, but if you're looking for that brain support, then tuna omega would be the one. Number seven is loss of consciousness, also known as fainting or syncope. And when you pass out, it's because the brain does not get enough fuel. And this could be low oxygen or low glucose or even ketones, but most people aren't in ketosis. So if this would happen because of low glucose, it is really difficult to get your glucose that low. Standard hypoglycemia is not going to do that. But if you're a type 1 diabetic, meaning you depend on insulin, so every time you eat, you take some insulin, you eat, blood sugar goes up, you take insulin to bring it down. But if you mismanage this and you don't eat, but you still take the insulin, now you're going to push down that already low glucose into levels where you can actually pass out. But when it comes to blood supply, there are two mechanisms, and one is called vasovagal syncope. And vaso means blood vessel, and vagal refers to the vagus nerve, or the parasympathetic nervous system. So if we have an overactivity, usually from an emotional shock of some sort, something emotionally very upsetting, then people tend to pass out. And what happens it, with that overactivity is that we slow down the heart, we decrease the pumping strength of the heart, and we dilate blood vessels all at the same time. So the blood follows gravity and goes away from the head and we pass out. Now the beautiful thing, of course, is that when we pass out, then gravity pulls equally. So now the blood starts flowing in the body more easily without so much blood pressure and the blood returns to the brain. The other way is called orthostatic hypotension. And this is kind of the same, but sort of opposite. And what happens here is we start laying down or sitting up and then we stand up very quickly. Because what happens now then is gravity is going to start pulling the blood down away from the head and we need to compensate very quickly. We need to create increased blood pressure with vasoconstriction. And the body part that handles that is called the adrenal gland. So if we have adrenal insufficiency, if they don't respond quickly enough or forcefully enough, then we don't get enough of a response to keep the blood in the head and we feel a little lightheaded or dizzy and in severe cases we can actually pass out. So all of these are going to have different solutions that can be pretty complex but if it is orthostatic hypotension most of the time it's going to be adrenal insufficiency and a great way to support the adrenals long term is with a product called Drenamin. We find that most people with adrenal fatigue are going to do really well with Drenamin over a longer period of time. Number eight is unexplained weight loss. And sometimes this is because of cancer, especially toward the later stages of cancer where the body is getting really tired of fighting this cancer and it doesn't even have enough resources anymore to absorb, to digest, absorb and make new tissues because that's very expensive with energy. And these people also after so long of having cancer, they don't have much of an appetite. 
And it could also be hyperthyroid or Graves' disease. And these people are going to have a huge appetite. They're going to eat all the time. But because the thyroid is overactive, then it's just burning off everything you eat. It's like your furnace is running at double speed and your heart rate is high. Everything is moving faster in the body. You're just burning off that energy like a wildfire. It could also be that you have undiagnosed type 1 diabetes. And this is one that most people don't realize because most people think diabetics are overweight. But with type 1 diabetes, just in the phase that you're getting it, you're going to go from having some insulin and over a period of time it drops down to where your body can't make any insulin. And as you're getting really close to zero, your blood sugar is going to rise. That's why it's called diabetes. But because you don't have any insulin, none of that sugar can make it into the bloodstream. And you can't absorb any fuel, any calories, so you lose weight. No matter how much you eat, all you do is you urinate and you pee out all that sugar. That's why type 1 diabetes used to be called starvation in the midst of plenty. And people used to die from this, usually at a fairly early age or so many years after they got it. Today, it's pretty simple. We have insulin and it's very easy to figure out if you just measure the right thing. So if you do regular blood work and you actually measure both glucose and insulin, then you will quickly figure out if this is happening because your glucose will be super high and your insulin will be almost non-existent. You could also lose weight from severe depression. And now the mechanism is that you're so depressed, you don't really want to do anything and you don't even have an appetite. And one more cause for this would be IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. So unlike IBS, which is irritable, which is more about stress, inflammatory means that there's a fire going on. And the classic cases of this are celiacs and Crohn's disease. And when the tissue is so disturbed, then it cannot do its job of absorbing nutrients. So now we eat things, but we can't absorb the nutrients and we just flush it straight out. So all of these are very serious and they're very different. So obviously you just need to figure out what's causing it and work from there. Number nine is swelling of the legs, ankles, and feet. And swelling is also called edema. And this is where fluid leaks out of the blood vessels and into the tissue. So they look puffy. And this could be caused by heart failure, meaning that the heart is not strong enough to push the blood all the way through. So it pushes it weakly and now it's not strong enough to return the blood from the legs up back into the heart. So we, it leaks out because we have too much fluid pooling in the lower part of the body. It could be kidney disease if the kidneys are not filtering the waste products and the electrolytes properly. Now those can build up those waste products and they bind fluid. So again, we have more fluid in the body. A really damaged kidney can also start leaking albumin, which is your main blood protein. And this protein acts as a sponge to keep the fluid in the blood vessel. And that also relates to the liver. So if you have liver disease, because the liver manufactures this albumin. So if the liver is really damaged, now you can't make enough albumin and you can't keep the water in the blood. So there's a couple of things you can do to manage the symptoms. You can elevate the feet. If you lift the feet up, then gravity is going to help pull the water back to the heart. Or you can use compression stockings. You can add pressure and that's also going to push the fluid back to the heart and avoid that excessive pooling. But realize both of these are not really going to make you any healthier. They're just going to handle the symptom. They're going to improve the symptoms. So they're definitely worthwhile doing. But what you really want to do is you want to start a lifestyle to heal your heart, kidney, and liver. Hopefully, there'll still be time to do that. And like we said before, prevention involves reducing insulin resistance because metabolic poor health 
is the cause, the primary cause. And we want to understand it's not 100% of the cause. It's not for 100% of the people. So when we say the vast majority, that's what it means. But there's still other things that can cause this. But for the vast majority, insulin resistance causes heart disease, kidney failure, and liver disease. So by making sure you're metabolically healthy and insulin sensitive, that's going to be your best bet to avoid these things. And again, there's no substitute for lifestyle changes, but there are some products that can help these organs. So if your heart, kidney, and liver need some help, we find that CardioPlus, Rena Food, and Liverplex work really great. They're whole food products, they're safe, and they can support this tissue over quite some time. Number 10 is weakness or fatigue that simply won't go away. So if you're working too hard, if you don't get enough sleep for a period of time, then it's normal to be tired. But if you rest, you should bounce back. If this doesn't happen, then that's a problem. Very often they simply call it chronic fatigue syndrome. And chronic simply means you have it, you're tired all the time. And syndrome means they can't figure out where it's coming from. And it can be very difficult because there are many different reasons. But some of these would be anemia, again, a lack of blood. If you can't distribute oxygen, you can't make energy. But it would take a pretty severe anemia to cause this chronically and severely. It could also be a sleep disorder, meaning that you have sleep apnea or insomnia. So sleep apnea means that you stop breathing sometime during sleep. So a lot of people, they can't regulate their breathing patterns during sleep and they shut down their breathing for 30, 40, 50 seconds at a time. And then the brain kicks in even without them waking up and they start panting and then they stop breathing and they go through these cycles. And this interferes with the quality of sleep. The brain can't really get through all those stages of sleep that helps it recover. And insomnia is basically any form of poor sleep. Either you can't fall asleep or you fall asleep fine, but you wake up multiple times and you're bright, fully awake during the night. So you're not getting that quality or amount of sleep. And fatigue can also be caused by chronic stress. And this is why it's so difficult. This is why chronic fatigue syndrome is so common, in my opinion. Because chronic stress, what that is, it's an ongoing sense of overwhelm. And how many of us can't relate to that? That no matter how much we work, there's always more stuff to do. And it's hard to feel good and energetic and look forward to that. It drains us when we feel we're never enough. So what we can do there is, first of all, to identify the cause if there is an organic cause, but I believe a lot of this is emotional and psychological. So if we practice feeling good, then we can make it a big deal. We can set a goal. I want to feel better. So we pick some good books, uplifting books, whatever they are to you, and you start practicing mindfulness and paying attention more to the good things in life than the stressful things in life. And what can happen there is your mind can shift very, very quickly. I bet you that if you're feeling really tired and somebody calls and says, you just won a million dollars, then I think you'd perk up for a little bit. So when we have something to look forward to, when we feel good, about life, when we have joy and a purpose, then we also have more energy. Now, because all these issues are super common and they're becoming more common, one of the most common prescriptions is for antidepressants, a form of psych medication. And if you want a more natural version of that, there's a whole food product called Mintran. And we find this in the office when people have some need of brain support and anxiety issues or mood issues, then this can help in most cases. But with all that said, you don't want to catch it early. And now you're thinking, have I gone completely crazy? No, 
Catching it early is better than catching it late, but even better is not to have to catch it because you never get it at all. That's called prevention. Now, in medical circles, very often they confuse the two terms. They think that prevention is the same thing as early detection, but it's not. Early detection means you already have it. Prevention means you do something to never get it. And that's why I have all these videos on this channel to explain how that works. And that's also why I created the blood work course that I mentioned. Because if you start understanding the body well enough and you get that blood work every year anyway, but if you understand what it means really well, now you can start reading between the lines. You can understand your body and you catch things so early that they never become a problem. You see when this markers start slipping just a little bit out of control and you understand how they relate to each other, now you really know what's going on and you can take charge, make some changes for the right reasons in the right way. And now go watch that video to learn about some other important signs. And if you want to master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, and turn on all the notifications so you never miss a life-saving video.